have the technology in this century to redress a predicament that has been with us for three million years. I'm asking you, are you happy with your life? Being born, aging, dying. Italian professor Sergio Canavero believes he can do what no other surgeon can. Death does not sit well with me. This is a man who says he can make the crippled walk again. And more than that, pave the way to eternal life by transplanting a human head. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive! A modern day Frankenstein. Victor Frankenstein had the same, you know, mind. He wanted to bring life. That's saying that you want to, in some ways, in many ways, play God. Uh, yes, we are playing God. We are tampering with the order, with a natural order, yes. But for now, he's starting with something less ambitious, offering hope to the paralysed. And, as you might imagine, there's a catch. First, he tells his patients, I'll have to remove your head. How confident are you that it would work? Uh, absolutely confident. 100%? Uh, 100%. And this is Professor Canavero's human guinea pig, Russian-born Valery Spiridonov, who might just be one of the bravest men on Earth. The 31-year-old and his wife, Anastasia, are desperate to find a way for Valery to walk again, to experience the things the rest of us take for granted. But unlike most of us, Val's is a dream he's prepared to die for. I mean, th th there's a big chance that this would go wrong. Uh, are you prepared to give your life for science? Someone has to. Someone has to be first. Uh, someone has to be first in space. Uh, someone has to be first in this. Of course, uh, the human experiments are unavoidable because many people uh, require this technology. Uh, their life is like, you know, a nightmare without it. Because, you know, when you have a chance to live a normal life, it's it worth it. It's worth the, the, uh, the risk. Since he was a child, Val has lived with a rare muscle wasting disease that has virtually paralyzed him, save for some movement of his head and hands. You cannot walk. Uh, you cannot do pretty much anything by yourself, and you have to ask people to help you. Uh, for example, I hire people to help me every day to get up from the bed, uh, to go uh, to the bathroom, etc. So it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty hard, you know, it's pretty depressing. Not that Val shows it. Val, a cappuccino for oh, you. Thank you. Three sir. sugars, thank you. Yeah. as per your request. Perfect. Here in Miami, Val is a computer scientist and he has a scientist's faith that Dr. Canavero can transplant his head onto another body, allowing him to walk again. Val, it probably seems a bit rich for an able-bodied person to be commenting on your quality of life, but it seems to me you're happy, you can do so many things and you're achieving so much, so why risk it all? Uh, because I'm curious. I'm curious uh, how all this can be uh, done, how can we um, bring the technology to change their quality of life, to change my quality of life, and uh, to make the world a better place. In theory, the procedure would work like this. Val would be matched with a suitable body donor, someone who is brain dead, but with a healthy body. Val's head will be surgically removed and attached to the new body, his spinal cord fused to the donors. Electricity would then be used to stimulate the new nerve connections. How confident are you that within your lifetime you'll take your first steps in a new body? Mm, I'm pretty sure about this uh, because I plan to have a long life. <laughs> you'll be cooled to 10 degrees. You'll be voluntarily decapitated. You'll have surgery for 80 hours. Then you'll go into a three-month coma. Are you terrified? Uh, no, I am interested. <laughs> You're interested? Yeah. Markedly less interested is Val's wife, Anastasia. 
I think uh, the operation is uh, very crazy for now, and uh, I don't want f for him uh, this operation. Uh, maybe sometimes after some years, uh, if um, the surgery will be have many practice in uh, this operation, it's it will be okay. But <laughs> for now, I don't want. Okay, so in other words, you'd prefer him to be number 10 or 20, not number one. Actually, yes. we, we had a kind of, <laughs> she really doesn't want me to do this. She, of course. Uh, she will think of uh, new and new ways of stopping me from, from this. Yeah. Half a world away. In the historic Italian city of Turin is the world's most controversial neurosurgeon. The man who says he can give Valeri a new body, Professor Sergio Canavero. So well, what do I call you, Professor? Dr. Frankenstein, of course. Fra you're happy for me to call you Frank? No, <laughs> call me Frank, absolutely. Canavero is remarkably cheerful about being compared to his fictional hero. You're happy with the title of the mad scientist? Well, scientists are all a little mad. But what becomes immediately clear is that for Canavero, this procedure is no joke. This is his life's work. When did you first come across this idea that you would want to carry out the world's first human head transplant? Well, actually, I was 16 years old. Uh, one day, I just uh, came across this clipping uh, from newspaper about this a neurosurgeon who carried out a full head transplant uh, uh, on a monkey. And I was like blown away. I said, it's fantastic, what did he do? While transplanting an entire human head may seem far-fetched, the same was once true of hand and heart transplants, which are now routinely carried out around the world. And just a few years ago, one of the biggest medical breakthroughs of all time, a human face transplant. This is a craniectomy. Now, Sergio Canavero is plotting the ultimate transplant surgery and happy to show me precisely how, if given the chance, he'd remove my head. The key is simple. Let's say that right now yeah. I insert uh, a, a scalpel. I can see you looking at my neck longingly. Yes, You've got a yeah. Dark, you you got know a dark that I love, I like, love neck. You stay away from my neck. I love brains more. <laughs> I love brains more. Well, stay away from my brain and my neck. We're in the Italian city of Turin, famous for its rich culture and 2,000 year history, but soon, perhaps, to be better known for one of the greatest medical achievements of all time the first human head transplant. This is the start of the revolution, and a revolution it is. And the man who says he's going to do it, neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero, is sizing up my body for a demonstration. What I want to do is detach my head, because my body is sick, very sick or whatever, mm -hmm. and I want to just install my head on your body. How do you, th how do you think your head would look on this body? Would you be happy with that? Uh, you wouldn't choose this body if you had no, a choice. No. Well, actually, my preference would be an Australian Thor. You know the actor? <laughs> That's it. Perfect. Hang on, oh. hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Thor, whoa, 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 whoa. Thor you're, beware. <laughs> you're saying if you had the choice, you don't want this body, you'd prefer to have Thor's body. Now, look, uh, Thor's body is a bodybuilder. It is easy to forget this wacky scientist is deadly serious, committed to achieving his life's ambition. So the surgery is like this. That's a good steady hand, thankfully. Yeah. No shaking, I've noticed. <laughs> no. <laughs> So we're going here, and of course, it's here. Something unnerving about this, uh, so to speak. No, don't move, don't move here. How long, once you've taken my head off, now, how long is... till it has to go on the new body? How much time we got? How long does it take for the transference? Easy. Now, imagine your head, mm. count. One, two, three, four. Stop. The head is now placed on the body. At that point, you start all the reconnection procedure. When Canavero performs the procedure, he'll be joined by a team of up to 30 doctors. 
Once the donor has been declared brain dead, the recipient is prepped for the operation. The surgeons swing into action. The surgery takes place in a huge operating suite with the two gurneys aligned very close to each other. Go me now, let's see for it. And two teams, two surgical crews working in unison. The head will be transected layer by layer. Okay, up enough, a little bit more. And they will spare the, the voice box. At that point, you use a, a sophisticated blade. So you cut through the, both cords. Once they, they, they are detached, you transfer one head on the body. Okay, so you behead one patient. In the case you and my head is transferred over uh, on your body. Then comes the most critical moment of all, fusing the two spinal cords. That has always been the stumbling block. But the professor says he has the answer, and to be honest, it is shocking in its simplicity. He will use a chemical known as polyethylene glycol, or PEG. It is something that is routinely found in things like sunscreens, perfumes, and even printers. Canavero says it has the incredible ability to repair and fuse delicate cell membranes, allowing the patient's head to control the new body. But is there any evidence that it works? Canavero says this dog in China is all the proof anyone should need. The animal was paralysed with a severed spinal cord, but treated immediately with Canavero's PEG technique. The dog is paralysed for three days. Paralysed. Within weeks, weeks, ends with dogs walking again. And after two months, running. It's certainly enough proof for Canavero's first volunteer, Val Spiridonov. Lots of people criticize uh, Dr. Canavero, but if I will be able to change my condition and will be able to uh, change life of other people around me, uh, this has to be done, yes. You, you know, some people say that you could effectively wake up and be conscious, but be paralysed and have no movement. To wake up in somebody else's body and not have any control, surely that would be the worst thing imaginable. Um, I prefer not to think about uh, <laughs> I would prefer not to think about it too. <laughs> yes, so I prefer to think of something good, uh, because when you concentrate on the negative sides, you can uh, be trapped in um, losing your passion to do this. When I saw Valeri for the first time, I was speechless. I didn't know what to say, but I was pissed. Because I looked at him and said, hey, this is a guy we could really help, and we are letting down. But a patient like Valerie yes. is desperate for some sort of hope. You're giving it to him. I'm saying, are you confident that you are giving him fair and reasonable hope. Yes, when I in, like when that. In, when in fair re and reasonable. When in reality, yeah. you, you could very well kill him. This is a guy who's newly married and has a lot to live for. Look, no one is forcing Valeri. I'm forcing Valeri. Now, listen to me clearly. There is only one man or woman on earth that can decide for himself or herself, and that's the Patient. Is this a case, Professor, of you putting a personal quest for surgical heroism above good medicine? <sighs> Let historians write whatever they want. I don't have an answer. Val Spiridonov has made his decision. Whether he's the first or the tenth to undergo the procedure doesn't matter to him, just so long as he can get out of that wheelchair. Val, what, what would that moment be like if you woke up and it was a success mm -hmm. and you took some steps? I mean, mm -hmm. that would just be a, a medical marvel as an understatement, but what would that be like for you personally? Um, I would uh, feel like I have uh, accomplished 
another project uh, successfully. <laughs> Uh, actually, being some champagne, and uh, a few, but a few bottles of champagne, maybe, please, Val. Promise me that. <laughs> Anastasia, how would you celebrate? Maybe some travel for um, what we want. Yes, maybe to Australia. <laughs> maybe to Australia. Yes, and to swim we would together. Love that. We would love yes, that. Yes. And the man who says he can make that happen is prepared to stake his life on it as well. Would you be prepared to roll the dice as such if they said, yep, sure, we'll green light you, but if you fail, you get a murder charge, we'll throw you in jail? No problem. Would you take that risk? Absolutely. You're that confident? Yes, I am. You're either, Professor, a deluded narcissist or one of the greatest geniuses that has ever lived. So only history will tell. Do you agree? I agree. Okay. <laughs>